This week on the Inkdwell, we go through my paper collection to see which ones perform the best and which ones perform the worst. From loose leaf to notebook paper, this is the 2019 Paper Shootout. Have you ever sat back, looked at the screen on your computer, and went, I want to start a war today in the fountain pen community? Well, that wasn't quite my intention, but nothing starts a war quite like paper, and today we're going to be taking a look at nine different papers to see which one's the best and which one's the worst. So to do that, I'm going to be using my Pilot Custom 743 with a coarse nib, that pen is, of course, going to be inked up with Je Herbon, Emerald of Chivor. This ink is going to be used primarily for the shimmer and color. Next, we're going to be using the Wancher Crystal 2, and that's with the broad nib, and it's going to be inked up with Diatramentus Petrol, because that's what I inked it up with at first, and I still haven't emptied the body after eyedroppering it. Next, we're going to be using my Keras Customs Decograph with a medium nib, and that's going to be inked up with KWZ Turquoise. I honestly don't know why I chose turquoise other than the fact that it matched the pen, but it's a good looking ink and the color should be interesting. For the final fountain pen, we're going to be using my Nemocene Singularity also with a medium nib, and for that, we're going to be using a Sheen Monster of Krishna Moonview. Pretty much for sheen, nothing more. Now, we're also gonna be using the obligatory standard pencil with the 0.7 millimeter lead, graphite thing, and the random Sharpie that's still writing strong after all those years. So let's go ahead and move on to the papers. First is the lined paper from this Clairefontaine notebook. Then we're going to go ahead and use lined paper from a Rhodian number 16 pad. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and use a loose Tomoe River paper. This happens to be uh, 52 GSM. Then we're going to be using the elemental paper carbon notebook. From there, we're moving on to the Clairefontaine Triumph paper which is lined and pretty heavily coated. Then we go ahead and pull up the Rhodia Goal Book for that notebook paper. Continuing the stack, we move on to the Iodine Notebook from Elemental Paper. It's the uh, Tamoy River paper as well. And then we go ahead and step into the Endless Works Tamoe River Paper Notebook that I got from Penn Chalet. And then to bring it on home, we're using the paper that pretty much everyone uses for reviews, and that is the Rhodia Number 16 Dot Pad. So mileage may vary, and I know your opinion may differ from mine, but the criteria I'm gonna use during this shootout is how does the color look on the page, how bad is the feathering, how bad is the bleed or show through, and how the overall writing feel was when I was using these papers. So let's go ahead and take a fast forward look at the writing samples and then move into the overview. So these writing samples have been sped up to a thousand percent because each of them took about two and a half minutes to do, and I'm pretty sure you guys didn't want to see me writing the same thing over and over for that much time. So here they are, sped up to about 13 to 20 second clips a piece. Now, to keep it simple for evaluation purposes, I'm only writing the name of the ink, or in the case of the Sharpie or the pencil, what they actually are. I don't need a lot of writing to be able to see what I'm going to be looking for in these inks and these papers, because I write with them on a daily basis, so I already have a good idea for the feel. But I want you to still be able to see how each of the samples 
at least behaves or reacts to each of the papers, the coatings, the lack of coatings, whatever the case may be. Now, one thing about the writing samples, though, I am doing this on a bare wooden desk, so there is a little bit of texture from the desk itself, and that's actually what I was using to judge the amount of feedback that I was getting from the paper as well. Uh, some of the more coated papers, like this Clairefontaine Triumph, I couldn't feel the desk underneath it at all. It was like writing on a very coated sponge. And the thinner papers, like the Tomoe River papers, I was getting a little bit of feel from the desk, but it was a smooth feeling from the desk, so there was a little bit of bump of variation from the texture, but no drag or tearing of the page itself, like here on this loose Tomoe River paper. I'm able to feel some of the texture of the desk, but that's about it. I'm not really feeling the paper when I'm writing on it. So now that we've gotten a look at the writing samples, let's go ahead and take a look at close-ups of each one and start judging them. The first thing we're going to be looking at here is the overall look of the ink itself and the bleed going onto the back of the page. Now, unlike the writing sample videos, I did catch the white balance issue that I was having and turned off auto white balance. So the only thing you're seeing here are minor corrections for brightness and contrast in the pictures. Everything else is just straight up what I saw from the camera taken at the exact same distance, which as you can tell on the Endless Works to Moe River paper, I kind of messed up on how big I was writing on that sample and got carried away. But this should give you a good idea of front and back what you can look for on these papers as far as what you're going to see from Bleed. So next up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the color and the feathering on each of the paper samples. Feathering will be on the left, and color will be on the right. Now, one thing to look for here, especially on the feather, is how much line definition you're getting. Now, you won't be able to see like massive amounts of ink just drifting off into the fibers of the paper, but like back on the Elemental Carbon one, you did notice that there wasn't as much line definition on that paper as some of the others. And that's a good idea that you're getting a lot of feathering from that paper. Also, on the color, you want to look at how much shading you're getting from like petrol, or how much sheen you're getting from Moonview, or how much shimmer and shading you're getting from Emerald of Shavor. So now that we've gotten a good look at the front, back, and side to side looks, the bleed, the color, the feathering, the shading, the sheen, the shimmer. Let's go ahead and rank these papers, at least how I feel they should be ranked. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the best and worst of each category, and then I'm going to go ahead and go through one through eight, how I would rank these papers. Now, the first category that we're going to be looking at is bleed. Now, looking through the top three, it was really close, but I found that the Clairefontaine notebook paper really did the best at only allowing the Sharpie to show through while doing a good job controlling the other ink samples and making it to where the pencil was almost not even visible compared to all the other samples. The worst one, unsurprisingly, has to go to the loose leaf Tomoe River paper. At only 52 GSM, it is the thinnest paper that we're using here, and everything is clearly legible on the back side of the page. So if you're going to need to have both sides of the paper, this is not the one for you. You're gonna wanna stick to one of the thicker papers or one of the papers that has more coating that's going to keep the ink on one side of the paper. Now, the next category we're going to be looking at is color. Now, for the color, I was looking not only at how much vibrancy you received from the ink, but how much of the color spectrum 
of the ink you are actually getting from lightest to darkest. So for the best, I have to give that one to the Endless Works Tomoe River Paper Notebook. It's a 68 GSM paper, and Tomoe River Paper is known for allowing your ink to really shine through and show what it can do on the paper with your fountain pen. And this is no exception. You got a very good range from light to dark, and you don't lose any of the color, unlike the worst in the color category, which is the Elemental Paper Carbon Notebook. Because of the way that the paper is manufactured or whatever the case may be, the color just falls flat. You don't have any of the vibrancy or any of the pop that you get from any of the other papers in this head-to-head -head competition. Now, for the final category, what I'm looking at here is the feathering of the ink on the page itself. So how much the ink is bleeding into the fibers of the paper and how much line definition you're losing because of that. So the best paper I found here was actually the Elemental Paper Iodine Notebook. Now, I sat here for the better part of two and a half hours just staring at the Diatramentis sample to look at the line definition there because of the four fountain pen inks I used, that was the most uh, temperamental when it came to the paper itself. And even with the Sharpie, that one was a good indicator of whether or not I was going to get a lot of feathering. And that paper just performed the best, at least to my eyes, as far as holding the line definition and keeping everything completely legible. Now, for the worst offender, though, we come right back to the Elemental Paper Carbon Notebook. If you look once again at the Diatramentis sample, you can see where the ink started to drift. And of the nine papers, this was by far the worst when it came to the drifting of the ink, the overall feathering, and the overall just bleeding out. Which is kind of interesting that Elemental Paper could take both the best and worst in the feathering category with two of their separate products. So let's go ahead and rank these papers. In my top slot, I definitely have to give it to the Endless Works Tomoe River paper. I like the line definition I get from it. It's got a good amount of color and shading, very little feathering, and a usable amount of bleed. So it's a very good paper for me, and even though I know I'm sacrificing being able to write on the back of the page if I use a very wet ink, I'm okay with that. It's still a very good looking paper, and it feels very good to write with. In second, we have the Tomoe River Paper Loose Sheets, the 52 GSM. Once again, Tomoe River Paper, very consistent, good line, good, good bleed and good feather. It just shows slightly too much on the back than the other from Endless Works, and that's why it's in my second spot. In third is the Clairefontaine Notebook Paper. It's a very good, consistent paper, and it has a really good feel to it. It's a little spongy at times, but it's a forgivable feel, and I really like having a paper that I can use both the front and back of when I'm using it in a notebook situation. In fourth is the final of the three Tomoe River papers that I did today, and that is the Elemental Paper Iodine. It's actually a very good Tomoe River paper. It's 68 GSM, like the Endless Works Tomoe. And it tends to behave quite like the Endless Works, but the reason it's in fourth is it just feels a little bit toothier than the Endless Works paper. I don't know what it is. Um, maybe it's where the paper was sourced, but it definitely has a little bit more tooth to it. And that's why it didn't make my top three. Now, in fifth is Old Faithful Rhodia number 16 dot pad. It's a good middle of the road, and that's really just how I see it. 
it's a good paper for reviews because it's uh, easy to get paper and it's well behaved enough that you're going to get an accurate representation of the the pens, the pencils, the inks, the shading and the sheen, but you are sacrificing some of the more extravagant shades, some of the more extravagant sheens to get that consistency. Now in sixth, and it was very close to the Rodia dot pad, was the Clairefontaine Triumph. The reason it rates worse than the dot pad for me really just comes down to the feel. There's too much coating on this paper, and if it wasn't for the coating, I think it would actually perform as good as Rodia dot pad, if not a little bit better, but overall, that's really the only difference between these two papers for me. Below that, we've got the Rodia number 16 lined paper. It's the same 80 GSM as the dot pad, and they should be very similar papers, but I find that the lined paper just bleeds way too much for me. It's way too inconsistent with each ink, and I don't get that consistency that I get from dot pad. Now, the last two kind of tie for last, and that's the 90 GSM Rhodia Gold Book paper and the 100 GSM Elemental Paper Carbon Notebook paper. Both of these papers, I mean, they're good for certain things. If you're using a rollerball, which I probably should have used on the review, they're good papers. But if you want shading, no. If you want sheen, no. If you want vibrancy, definitely not. And if you want a well-behaved ink that's not going to feather, just stay away from those two. You can get by with pencil. You can get by with just extremely well-behaved fountain pen inks. So definitely tie for eighth, those two. So there you have my take on nine very different fountain pen papers. A lot of these you can pick up at retailers like Goulet, Jet Pens, Van S, or channel sponsor Pen Chalet. They actually carry quite a few of them, with the exception of like the loose leaf Tomoe and the uh, elemental paper stuff. But other than that, if you want to pick up a lot of these papers that I talked about, including the Endless Works Tomoe paper, head on over to penchalet.com, click on that radio podcast link at the top of the page, and enter Inkdwell in the How You Heard About Us section for a 10% off site-wide discount. Most importantly, though, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. Comment down below which paper you think is the best and where you think maybe I got it wrong. Like I said at the beginning, there's no better way to start a war in the fountain pen community than with paper. So let's see what we get on this one. If you like the video, click that like button. Or if you didn't like it, well, you know what to do. Either way, if you're a new person, hit subscribe. Keep an eye out for more videos. And if you want to support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash the ink and become a patron. It means a lot. Also, follow the channel on Twitter and Instagram at the ink That's all for this week. I'll see you next time.